Hi everyone. Uh, so yeah, my background is in cyber. So for my project, uh, I tried to put together a GPT-2 based uh, phishing simulator. Uh, I don't know how familiar you all are with phishing, uh, but it is basically a technique uh, by which uh, an attacker tries to use emails uh, to persuade or coerce uh, the victim into performing some action. It uh, is actually has a very significant impact because it is uh, estimated that in the US alone, in one year, it causes about uh, $3.5 uh, billion of damage. Uh, the usual targets uh, for, for phishing are sensitive informations, uh, uh, which are often then later used in more sophisticated phishing attempts, uh, user credentials to try to gain access to a company's network. Uh, or trying to directly install uh, malware on a company network. Uh, the most common ways uh, in which this is carried out uh, is either trying to get the victim uh, to click on a link to a forged website uh, or to click on a malicious attachment. There are some technical measures in place uh, to prevent this, uh, such as secure email gateways uh, and phishing detection software in which AI is actually used quite often. But on average, uh, humans are the most effective tool so the most effective measure is usually training and simulations however a survey revealed that among big among large companies about 25 percent do not carry out training or simulations and 63 percent only carry out quarterly or yearly simulations which Translated in practice uh, often means that uh, three times a year, there is a guy from the IT office uh, that just like punches up an email and sends it to everyone, uh, which is not very effective because after five people spot it, uh, everyone in the office knows that it is happening. Uh, so it's not really serving the purpose of training. Uh, and the situation is likely to be even worse uh, for small companies, uh, which is a huge problem because uh, it's quite common uh, for attackers uh, to use smaller companies uh, as uh, vectors uh, to get into the systems of uh, supply chain partners. And in fact, 60% uh, of data breaches are estimated to involve a third party. So basically, introducing a generative model that can create phishing emails for training uh, could could uh, bring a lot of benefits, uh, such as an increasing an increased variety of messages uh, and the ability to carry out the simulation on an ongoing basis, uh, and also to kind of like automatically generate insight uh, from uh, the results of the simulation, uh, which can then be used uh, to carry out a more effective cost benefit analysis of implementing new security measures. Uh, so for the uh, purpose of the project, I've used the GPT-2, which is an autoregressive model, which means that it models sequences, and it does so via word embeddings and attention metrics, which I think the guys before being already explained quite well, so I'm not going to spend too long on it. But uh, the important features of the model are that it is uh, self-supervised and significantly more computationally efficient than previous models used to model sequences. And this allowed uh, for a significant, uh, significantly larger models uh, since you don't need to label as much data and uh, the training time is uh, relatively reduced. And since the models are much larger, they are quite good at building like a general knowledge base, uh, which then enables them to multitask. Uh, so for the objective of the project, uh, I kind of like as a first step, I tried to define the scope of what I was actually setting out to do. Uh, to do so, I divided an email into several components. Uh, some of them are standardized, uh, and I'm not going to try to generate those uh, since they can just be programmatically inserted once the main body of the email is generated. Uh, while some are uh, highly variable, like the body of the email, the email, and that is where my focus is. Uh, so in practice, my goals uh, are to first uh, generate uh, an email that sounds reasonably like a workplace email, and then uh, develop some mean uh, to control the output. Uh, as a data set, I've used the Enron data set, uh, which uh, Enron is a company that a uh, huge conglomerate uh, that went into bankruptcy in the early 2000s. There was a lot of fraud involved. Uh. <laughs> So all the emails of high executives became a public record, and so they are freely available online. Uh, however, the data was very, very messy. Uh, this is like a 
part of a data point. Uh, and since I'm trying to just generate the body of the email, the part that I'm interested in is just this. So significant effort went in the cleaning process. As a first step, I tried to separate the threads. Like each file was a thread of emails. So as first step, since I want to generate a single message per time, I had to separate each thread into individual messages and then take the headers out of the message. I then stored all of the data into a database. This allowed me to have like all the components of the email like separated, but also stored together. For this purpose, MongoDB was kind of like the obvious choice uh, since it was, it's a document-based uh, database. Uh, so it is quite intuitive uh, to kind of like model the data and also to then retrieve it later. Uh, the following step uh, was to remove automatic footers, which as I said before, is not something that I'm interested in generating. It was actually very important uh, to improve the quality of the results uh, since in a lot of emails, uh, like 90% of the email was actually the footer and like the actual body of the email, the email was like one word. And also since I'm trying to generate emails that have a link in them, a lot of automatic footers that like kind of like promotional links, but the body of the email was not actually about the link. So trying to fit this as an example of an email containing a link actually just confused the model. Uh, I then used the regular expressions uh, to match uh, emails uh, containing URLs or attachments, uh, and I tagged each email in the database, uh, and also kind of other tags uh, for the most common uh, file formats uh, and the ones that are of most interest for the purpose. And yeah, then uh, here you have a picture of a finished entry. After that, uh, I turned the entry into the actual data point that I'm uh, feeding into the model. Since I'm trying to model a sequence, I wanted to create special tokens uh, that I will then feed as input into the model so that the model knows that the email, that what follows is supposed to refer to an attachment and specifically a PDF. The data set uh, was very skewed in the sense that there were a lot of emails that had very few words, uh, like one, two, or even zero, and a few emails that had like thousands of words. Uh, I'm not really interested in either of the extremes because uh, there isn't a lot to learn from please review or thanks. Uh, and at the same time, I also want to be sending messages, not essays. Uh, and also there were not so many, I couldn't find like as many emails containing attachments or URLs. And for that reason, I kind of like reduced uh, the size of the data set from 100,000 emails about uh, to about 25,000 documents. I then fed the, the, this data into GPT by adding the new, the new custom tokens into the vocabulary and initialized the new embeddings for each new token. A uh, very nice thing uh, was the fact that it didn't take so long to train the model. So I was able to run a lot of experiments and see how like all the processing kind of influenced the output. And uh, you can see here the like effect of the cleaning. This is kind of before removing all the others. So a lot of like garble. This is afterwards, which is at least more of what you would actually find in an email body. But the biggest improvement uh, was uh, using a pre-trained instance uh, of uh, GPT-2. So like that is why the fact that uh, the model can build a very good general knowledge base was actually very important to achieve a good result. So for now, the model is kind of limited in the sense that at the end of the day, it's still trained on the data of just one company. So all the emails that it outputs are kind of bound uh, to kind of talk about stuff that was discussed in that company. So it's going to be heavily focused on uh, mostly energy, I believe, uh, commodities and uh, some business services. There is still some noise because uh, the cleaning process was very complicated since there were a lot of like, for, like different formattings uh, for all the emails. Uh, so finding rich expect patterns that would match most of it was definitely the most complicated part of the project. Uh, 
and uh, I turned it on collab, so I could only go so high with the batch size, which actually still really helped because uh, it did smooth out the loss curve a lot and it did achieve like much lower losses. Uh, and I would also like to eventually implement some more features uh, specifically to generalize the output. Uh, so for example, uh, all the like specific details like dates uh, or like name of people, it would be nice, for example, to replace them with a token that just says name, name of sender, name of addressee, or maybe even uh, replace them with tokens that refer to the business function of the person that they are being sent to because then it would also kind of enable you to send an email posing as a specific business function. And also I've started to pass the corpus into an encoder model as well to do some topic modeling. So that then on top of having like uh, generating an email with attachments, I can also have some control on what the email is actually about. Uh, the data set was still a bit small. So it wasn't super successful. It didn't really find a lot of interesting topics, uh, but I have several gigabytes of emails uh, in my hard drive. So stay tuned. <laughs> and yeah, that's it.